thanks for coming today. Um, so I'm going to borrow Badoy's name now. I'm going to call it the Writing Fellowship Group. Uh, <laughs> although you have a better, if you have a different name, we could change it later. But let me just tell you a bit of where this comes from. So um, um, there's a book here that I'm holding in my hand. I'm just going to share it. Um, my screen a tiny bit. Um, share, share screen. Um, right. So this, this book called How to Write a Lot that um, I bought early in my PhD. So this November 2012, that was the beginning of my second year. Um, and I don't remember who recommended this to me. Um, and actually, I mean, I'm holding it in my hand. I never really finished it, but like, um, I felt it was fairly uh, transformative at the time, even though I wasn't writing really any papers back then. Um, and um, it's, um, I highly recommend getting this one. Um, if we were in person, I, I would lend you my, my, my copy. Um, but I see that there's a newer version, 2018. So um, I might buy that. Um, just to check it out. Um, now, this book, How to Write a Lot. Um, this is, I read it, or the parts that I read it, uh, I read them when I was, I was uh, a lot better maybe at, at reading uh, books, because I have a lot of highlighting in different colors and like notes in pencil about words in English that I didn't understand at the time. But, um, this book is the author is Paul Silva, um, who is I think a faculty in psychology, um, and so the perspective of the book he wrote is about like um, like writing academically, but um, kind of in his own in his world of, uh, of psychology, um, and um, he studied the subject. Um, it's there's a, several like things that I, I found really helpful that go maybe even beyond writing. Um, and I'm just gonna go through some of the quotes or things I have highlighted. Um, so part of it is like, um, we don't talk about our insecurities and maybe writing is one of them, our feelings, things like that. Um, but there's also some skills that are like uh, improve with practice um, and writing is one of them. Um, Writing is hard, um, and that's, if you feel that it is hard, it's because it's actually really hard. Um, it's, you know, you have to uh, condense a lot of information that is um, uh, complicated, like methodological details, um, statistics, all of that into a tight amount of space, right? Because you, you typically have a limited amount of words when you're doing scientific writing. And then uh, Harry says, it, it isn't really easy especially when you know that anonymous reviewers will trash that manuscript like a dusty carpet, right? So, <clears throat> you know, it is hard, but, um, um, uh, but it's a skill, writing is a skill. Um, and so the way we learn skills, we, no one is really born with that, with that talent for it, is uh, we have to learn through systematic instruction and practice. Um, it also says that, uh, he has this little paragraph that says, how does psychology train graduate students to write? The most common model of training is to presume that graduate students will learn about writing from their advisors. But many student advisors are, writing, are struggling writers who themselves complain about not finding the time to write, who pine for spring break and the summer months. The bland are leading the blind. Um, 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 and so really there's, um, you know, writing is such a crucial thing for our field, but um, it's not really a skill that we train people to do, um, how to do it. Um, and so the book, this How to Write a Lot book, the, um, the, the solution that Paul uh, describes is, um, uh, is really about uh, organizing um, and saving, uh, allocating some time to do the writing. Um, to practice and improving your writing skills um, instead of like doing them like last minute. Um, so um, 
he says it, it isn't like a race or a game. Um, and, you know, it's something we need to learn because publication is a natural necessary endpoint of the scientific process, like when you're um, uh, sharing your information. And so um, something that he encourages is creating what, what he calls a writing schedule. Um, and so um, part of that writing schedule, I mean, uh, you can do it in a group. And I see here that uh, in the book he uses, I didn't remember this, but he uses the term agraphia group, which I'm going to type because um, um, agraphia, it's a Latin word. Um, instead of writing accountability group. Um, um, writing accountability group is, is also a name that is typically used for this, but um, he doesn't actually use that name that I revised the book uh, quickly today in the morning. <laughs> um, so, so there's, um, he, uh, he talks about the spacious barriers. Um, these are, uh, again, like this book was hard for me to read. Because there's a lot of English words that I don't know. Spacious, I have heard of a note that is having a false look of truth or genuine, genuine. Um, um, and so these are barriers that like we think of, but um, there's ways to get around them. One of them is I can't find time to write. And this is, um, this, everyone is different, but like this happens to me fairly frequently, where it's like, I know that I need to write, um, but, uh, but I also need to do X, Y, and Z also. And then I don't find the time to do it. Um, and then um, he talks about, instead of finding the time, you need to uh, plan ahead and allocate the time. He says that, uh, finding time is a destructive way of thinking about writing. Um, he says, instead of finding time to write, uh, a lot of time to write. So like assign some time uh, to write. And then um, I forget if he talks about this in this book or if it's someone else that I read that talks about how um, maybe we have, I mean, this is a hypothesis, that maybe we have a limited amount of like energy for taking decisions. And so, um, if you, you know, you wake up and then in the morning you have to plan everything that you're going to do. Like, you know, what do I want for breakfast? Um, um, sure, should I like bring an umbrella, yes or no to work? All those things. Eventually you take so many little decisions, you're like, your brain power gets um, tired. Or, I mean, you spend your brain power um, and, um, you might have some t uh, trouble like actually doing uh, some of the things you, 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 you told yourself like you needed to do. So, um, so um, I think he, he's the one that talks about this because that's the idea of the writing uh, schedule, which is like, um, instead of like thinking, okay, when will I have the time to do this? Just in advance, assign it on your calendar and like block amount of time for that. Um, actually, let me share my screen again. Because um, this is something that um, actually is not like really writing related, but um, I started doing way back then. So in my calendar, you can see here, like I added some like, I have an exercise calendar, an organized day, emails. Um, all of this was things I, I think I started back then. Um, some of them I'm better at doing them other than others, right? Like for example, like Tuesday here, my email and organize a gets overridden by like another meeting that I have. But like um, instead, of, um, instead of thinking like, okay, should I be checking my email all the time? I try to just check it three times per day type of thing. Um, Cause um. Uh, I need to be doing other things instead of just uh, replying to emails. Um, um, so, um, so he says, uh, Paul says that the secret is the regularity, not the number of days or the number of hours for writing, but really this I think applies to many things. Um, um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, he also talks about like, I need to do some analysis first, uh, or I need to read a few more articles as another barrier to writing. And then he says, well, people that tend to be binge writers also tend 
tend to be being um, statisticians. Like you leave it to the last minute, you do it like the last Saturday or something you have free before a deadline. Um, uh, also like uh, to write a lot, I need a new computer, a nice chair, a better desk, a lazy printer, all the things. Um, and he says, okay, yeah, like maybe all those tools would help, but like, um, uh, we're always good at coming up with like um, reasons why we're not doing something, right? Um, then another one is um, I'm waiting until I feel like it, AKA I write best when I'm inspired to write. Um, so this one, I guess I have some mixed feelings because I do sometimes like, for example, for blog posts, I do that when I'm, when I have a good idea type of thing. Um, but, um, um, but, um, he, you know, he criticizes a bit that approach. Um, so um, he says that um, a lot of it is about learning to manage your time um, and like uh, setting goals. Um, that once you, in my personal perspective, is like once you start to feel like you're doing something, then you feel better about it. Um, and so. You might not have like you know writing a paper has a lot of different parts, but if you say like, "Oh, I did this thing," right? It's like, "Ooh, I accomplished something," right? Um, um, and it's kind of the same thing. Why uh, I've seen a lot of advice, and I like I like this advice about like celebrating every small thing you do, right? Because um, you don't want to just celebrate when the paper gets accepted. I mean, of course you want to, right? Like, oh, congratulations, Kira, by the way. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, uh, you also want to celebrate when you first submit the draft, when you first give your draft to the people, your co-authors, when you, you know, uh, when you finish like the introduction, when you, you know, finish a method section. Uh, I mean, there, there's degrees of celebration maybe, but like you still want to, um, you know, celebrate every small thing you're doing because um, otherwise the the cycle of reward is very long. Right? You need to wait a very long time to feel rewarded, and like the, um, it's a very long process, right? It's uh, kind of like a marathon. Um, so uh, uh, Paul argues that um, um, the planning is a part of writing. Um, so he says that people that write a lot are also people that plan a lot, um, and so. Um, he also says that like he doesn't like the big goals of like okay I want to finish a paper I want to like submit this um, grant I want to like um, um, I don't know um, I want to finish this review he says it's about like having really small concise goals so for example say like oh one goal could be I want to write at least 200 words or uh, I want to miss add, add the missing references and then uh, you know, check them, um, or I want to write three paragraphs, or I want to about the in the discussion, or um, you know, I, he has a several li list of examples of, of of like smaller, more concise goals. Um, so um, there's um, okay. Uh, I'm skipping some of the things. He has a spreadsheet um, on Excel about like how he's um, he tracks the time he has spent writing. We'll do a version of that um, um, in a, in a bit. Um, it's not really for tracking ourselves. Uh, it's more about the the writing group. Um, so a a graphia group. What does that actually mean? So. Um, 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 a person he works with called Cheryl um, suggested that agraphia, which is defined as the pathological loss of the ability to write, to write, um, was a good name for for a group like this, and um, um, and the there's different flavors of these groups. Um, another name that people frequently use is writing accountability group. Um, and so what does the accountability part really mean here? So the idea of these groups is 
you this um, they have to be small, maximum around eight people. Um, and so uh, you meet, let's say, for one hour every week, or um, or it could be every two weeks or something like that. But um, you meet for the hour, and um, uh, you're you have to hold yourself accountable that you're going to actually go to the meeting, right? So that's like one of the first barriers of like. Uh, everyone can be really busy and um, and there's many reasons why suddenly you might not be able to go to a meeting right like um, uh, let's say you have to finish a presentation that you're giving that week um, um, uh, and like all these are very very valid reasons right um, let's say um, um, you have a doctor's appointment right and so um, but then um, the idea here is that you have to give like a fairly strong weight to the group where you're like the things that you can plan for in advance try to plan them such that they don't overlap of course if you're sick uh, or um, you're having a really bad day um, um, uh, I need like a mental day mental health mental health day um, or things like that that's you know completely fair but like um, but like things that you can plan ahead like oh like scheduling a dentist appointment, right? Like try to uh, make it sure that it doesn't overlap. Um, um, and so that's the first uh, part about the accountability of like making sure you go to the group. Um, these uh, several versions of these groups, they run for 10 weeks and uh, you have to go for at least eight of the 10 weeks. Um, otherwise they kick you out and then they don't let you in for the next writing accountability group, right? Because there's also, part of the about the accountability is that there has to be an actual like um punishment or loss if you don't follow the rules type of thing uh and that's basically saying like okay we're not gonna let you back in the group um the other part about the accountability comes about like once you're actually in, in the group meeting to to concentrate on on that group meeting so so like don't uh, start like responding emails or um, I don't know, buying the toilet paper, <laughs> which is really important, but like, or like other things like <clears throat> during that meeting. Um, um, so that's uh, really the accountability part of it. It's not really about like, uh, uh, are you writing, uh, is, is the things that you've, are the things that you wrote that are really good or not? Are the things that, um, how, you know, how many paragraphs did you produce? Um, um, Matt says coding. Uh, yeah. So uh, actually that, you know, I want to share my screen again because um, I was in, a, in several of these groups during my, um, my, um, my years in, um, in grad school. And this is actually an email from uh, the person who, who ran one of these groups um, that he's, uh, this person sent that email on June 1st, 2016. Um, um, so, I mean, by this point, we had already had a couple of wags. So he was just saying like, okay, we're gonna do a new one. Um, um, you know, um, uh, and so he has this, this person has this uh, wag description where it's like meet for 10 weeks, um, and then at each of the meetings, five minutes, each person says um, what they did in the week. Um, I don't think we need that part, but um, then you do need this part, which is each person states their clear goals for the session. Then you actually do stuff for X amount of time. And then at the end of the session, each person says whether they achieved their goals for the session. Um, and then uh, then optionally, you could also set goals for the next week. Um, but what I like is really the middle part. It's the um, um, is um, stating the goals, doing something, then saying whether you did them or not. Um, um, and then, of course, here there's the part of like you have to make it eight out of ten weeks, um, maximum eight people. And now there's also a part here about like what is actually considered academic writing. So this person, in their opinion. There was no blogs or documentation allowed, so only really papers. Um, um, 
then everything else that falls under creating a paper was acceptable. So let's say in a figure, um, creating a figure, um, like, you know, detailing something on a figure, um, um, but not writing code or analysis, kind of like what Matt was alluding to. Um, now, <clears throat> I think that, for example, documentation should uh, be allowed because, for example, in the project with, a, with, a, with Nick, um, documentation is a pretty, part, a pretty important part of the final um, uh, um, academic product, right? So I still think that um, that, that should be allowed. Blogs, I love writing blogs. Um, uh, blog posts, that's how I practice writing English and, you know, and explaining some of the ideas I have. And so this, I think we could like uh, debate later whether um, it's okay or not. Um, 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 I also think that writing blogs is important about uh, for communicating your science. And so at that point, I think that uh, that if we should allow writing those type of blog posts where you're like talking about um, your projects at work type of thing. Um, but uh, but maybe other blog posts that are more about um, I don't know how was your weekend type of thing. <laughs> maybe that we maybe we won't allow those ones. Um, so that um, you know, this is one version of a writing accountability group. Um, that's the, the way this person decided to run it. Um, um, but uh, um, so we'll we'll adapt it. You know, all of these things are you can adapt them. Um, one thing we did do back then that I liked was having a Google spreadsheet like this. Um, um, I don't have a, I didn't, I couldn't find a link to one of the old ones, uh, back from those years. But, um, the idea is that, uh, you have one, um, row per person per session, or you say, what's your name, the date, um, but you can give here a big overview of the project name that you're working on, because that will help, um, see, um, uh, across multiple sessions, uh, um, what you were working on and especially for people that are not as familiar with like exact details of, of, of what you're really working on. Then you have to, you have like a goal for the session. I initially wrote this as goals in plural, but I think it's best to just have it in singular, one goal. Um, 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 and then you say whether you met that goal or not, or you didn't meet it. Um, in one version, I think we had actually a new column about saying like, what were the things you actually did? during the session, um, but I think it's really, you know, you yourself know whether you met the goal or you didn't met the goal. Um, we, we used to color code this um, cell with like, I think three colors, which was like, no, yes, maybe. Um, 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 but um, I think maybe we should just try the yes or no type of thing. Um, um, like if you feel like you did most of it, then you can say yes, right? Like um, it's hard to always, like fully accomplish a goal. Um, and then you can put a link if you want to the actual stuff that you're doing, because um, maybe you're like, oh, I need some help in this section. And you want to invite people to to check what you wrote um, or to, or maybe you want to show, right? Um, uh, to like, let's say you're using Google Docs, maybe you want to show the, um, Using suggestion mode, what you did in the session. Um, so what I'm proposing uh, is to um, to have a group like this, um, 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 where uh, we meet once per week. Um, it won't be limited to ten weeks because I think uh, this is really just um, 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 an activity that helps a lot of people. Because um, we're doing a lot of different types of academic writing. Um, 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 oops, I erased my name. Um, so yeah, I, meet, I propose that we meet once per week. Um, and then the first uh, minutes of the session, everyone, uh, you know, uh, writes on, on this Google spreadsheet, uh, their goals for the session. We go um, in like a circle on Zoom. Everyone's, you know, verbalizes what they're trying to do. Then we, um, each person, we, 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 you know, if we were in person in a room, um, we'd just be sitting uh, next to each other, but um, we can uh, stay on the Zoom um, meeting uh, uh, right now that we're remote. Um, everyone does their own work for a while. 
and then the last uh, um, um, so uh, so we, we we start at 10 we start writing let's say at um, um, around 10 of 5 to 10 10 then let's say around 10 50 we stop writing um, uh, then we go around in circles and say whether well, we met or didn't meet the goal um, and then we can end the session with adding uh, like a couple of like um, if you have any questions about um, you know you maybe you need some feedback because uh, this is not really about any like writing style or how to actually do some things but, um, but um, I think we could have a couple minutes at the end where you can ask maybe some questions about like, um, should I do it this way or that way? Um, if you need any feedback or we can like schedule some meetings, more like one-on-one -on -one meetings um, uh, type of thing. So that's what I have in mind. Um, and I'm gonna stop recording. So I think that's the end of the intro. Um,